Hello, everybody. It's Jason and Justin. Today, we are joined by the lovely Suzanne De Laurentiis. How are you doing today? I'm great. How about yourself? Glad to be on the show. Doing well. Yeah, try not to overheat. Uh, what part of the country do you live in? I'm in L.A. actually right now. Yeah. What's well, way hotter there than it is in Ohio? It's pretty hot yes. in Ohio, though. L.A., the illegal firecracker network of the world. <laughs> <laughs> My apartment complex as well. <laughs> it was last night. It was insane. I couldn't walk across my street without getting hit in the head by a bottle rocket. <laughs> That's aggressive. Yeah. I cannot wait to talk about your Amazon series that you're doing. But um, first, I want to talk to you about some of the films that you produced and what, what it's like to be a producer. Well, let's see. Um, it's extremely challenging. It can be very stressful. Um, it's very demanding. Um, kind of an old Orson Welles quote. What, before he passed away in his studio apartment in Hollywood, he said, you spend 98% of your time trying to raise money and the other 2% making movies. So mm -hmm. it's a challenge. You, you have to be able to raise money. You have to come up with concepts that buyers want to buy. Um, it's, I wouldn't say it's easy, but I do have a passion for it and I think I'm pretty good at it and I really enjoy doing it. <laughs> you got to work on the Rocky franchise. What was that experience like? Yeah, actually I was just some production support on that. I just helped with some of the locations and um, my mother helped with some of the casting, but Sly is always just amazing and such a joy. So, um, it's a very fun, fun project. Awesome. Awesome. Another movie that I, I loved growing up. I haven't seen it in a while because it's not easy to find the first one, but you worked on Mannequin on the Move as well. Yes. Yes. I was an actress in that. And the director, Stuart Raphael, was a good friend of mine. So, yes, those are going way, 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 way back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a child of the 80s. <laughs> oh, me too. Me too. I love 80s movies. So fundraising, what's the most challenging part of doing that? Is it is it the concept? Is it what, what's the is it car washes? Like what's how do you? Do you that? know, yeah. it's a whole lot of luck. Oddly yeah. enough, it's right place at the right time. Sometimes it's people that you least expect that write the biggest checks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I don't know. People ask me that all the time, yeah. and I think um, I think one of the things that really helps is everything we do, whether it's we've made movies for 80,000 up to 18 million and everything mm -hmm. in between. And I think one of the things that really helps is I have a great team around me. So whether we're spending a small amount of money or a large amount of money, everything always looks really great, high quality. They're, you know, they're all really A-list looking productions. So that really helps. For sure. For sure. So I was, th I was just thinking about this and maybe I'm off base, but like, does Pepsi and things like that, when you have like a label, how, how does that work? Do you, are you a part of that? Like if you have a label that's gonna be a part of your movie or anything like that, that makes um, sure the Pepsi is shown this way in the scene or whatever? Yeah, sure. Sometimes we get people that come in with product placement. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, you know, it just depends on the movie. Um, <coughs> movies are more sought out for, you know, for product placement, depending mm -hmm. who's in them. But we always have product placement people that work with us. Gotcha, okay, cool. Yeah. So, so are you a huge fan of horror? Oh my gosh, yes. Yes. Let's, let's talk some horror before we get too much more into your career. What kind of horror films do you like? Oh my goodness. I can tell you I was hooked in the 60s racing home from grade school to watch Dark Shadows every day at 3 p.m. <laughs> oh my God. Jonathan Freed and Barnabas Collins. I actually have Laura Parker, who was the original Angelique, on my scare show. That was, that was, the you know definitely the carrot dangle for me man <laughs> once i got hooked on that series i was hooked on horror in general but besides that um i'm a huge fan um of course of um coppola's dracula which was amazing with winona Ryder, the exorcist 
the original Nosferatu's. Um, I'm a huge horror fan, and because I have made tons of horror movies, <laughs> so I just love them. They're a lot of fun. Yeah, horror is a fun genre because yeah. um, you have you have like the Oscar films like Exorcist. You got the mm -hmm. in betweens, and then even if a horror film is not great, mm -hmm. it still can be. It's still a lot of fun, and oh, there's a lot of comedy. Horror has like twelve different genres within itself. Like Army of Darkness is a flat out yeah. comedy, but that still fits into the horror right. genre. Horror mm -hmm. fascinates me because there's so many different aspects. You don't have that same thing with comedy. There's so a lot of creative action. freedom. Yeah, a lot yes. of creative freedom. And, and no matter what the film is, if it's horror, it will find its audience. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whether sure. it's the, whether it's the guys that live in their grandmother's basement, <laughs> or, in their basement or, or young kids that you know are watching it with their dads or their grandpas. Um, yeah, so it's look. There's nothing more fun than curling up on a couch at you know when it gets dark with a bowl of popcorn and watching. And getting scared, yeah. For it sure. makes you afraid to go to the bathroom by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> So what part of filmmaking do you like the best? Because I see that you've done some writing, some directing, some producing, some acting. I have to say, probably now I'm sort of on the back end, I would say, of my career. I really enjoy the sales part and post-production and the marketing. I really enjoy that or taking something, you know, and, and um, kind of taking it to the next level. Maybe it starts out as something, but then... Mm -hmm. You know, we're able to make it maybe bigger and better than what we anticipated and I, I really like the just the whole sales pitch and <laughs> getting the buyers to buy it and I really I mean I still love physical production too it's just um, I'm gonna be approaching the big 6-0 next year mm -hmm. and and working 20 hours on a film set is a bit of a challenge at this point so and I like I like raising funds I like executive producing a lot too so so tell us about Suzanne's Saturday Night Scares. Well, I, again, huge horror fan. And I'm a big horror fan of classic horror movies, the ones from Hammer House, the older ones from the late 60s and 70s. And I was trying to think of something that I could do now later on in my career that was less stressful, something I still had a passion for, mm -hmm. um, and something that I thought people would enjoy. And when we came up with the show, actually the writer of the show, Lee Turner, he has his own um, show called After Hour Cinema. I wanted to do something a little different. I didn't want to make fun of the movies because I'm a filmmaker myself and I know how hard it is to get a movie made. Whether you're raising a hundred dollars or a hundred million, it's extremely difficult. So right, sure. I didn't really want to poke fun at the movies. It was more trivia and, and you know behind the scenes stuff and, and then having um, some of the actors that were actually in the movie on the show or other actors that were in movies that were similar. So so I just wanted to do it a little different, something a little different. Yeah, I love that's one of my favorite things about movies and TV shows is going back and throwing it on with like the commentaries or with pop ups. Mm -hmm. Like right. I watched yeah, bad example, but it's an example. I watched all of Impractical Jokers and then I found out they had another version of the series with like all the behind the scenes stuff popping mm -hmm. up on the screen. And mm -hmm. I, I used to listen to DVD commentaries all the time, which I should now yeah. because I work from home and I. I need right. a lot of stuff to listen to, but uh, no, that's <laughs> that's great. I, th I think that's great. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoy it. The show's a lot of fun, and we kind of got shut down a little bit during COVID, but we'll be making more shows um, in the summer. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, so how do, how do the episodes work? No, I'm just curious. Do, do you watch, like, clippets of it, or is it all just, like, fun facts about the movie and interviews with the artists? Or the oh, no, it's the whole movie. Okay. We show the whole movie, okay. and then Good we deal. have breaks where we talk about the movie and then we have guests on so that's awesome that's a lot of fun yeah yeah that's it's a lot of fun. Fun. what is very frightening tales and where can i watch that well actually that kind of shut us down during COVID, unfortunately <laughs> um, that's going to be on amazon soon it's kind of like um the old fright night where we have different shorts of the horror genre so unfortunately, we were only able to do two episodes of that before you know COVID hit. So hopefully, we'll be able to do more episodes of that in the future as well. I love that too. I can't get enough Creep Show, Twilight Zone. Yes, uh, yes. yes. <laughs> any any series like that, you've got me. You've got my money. You've got yeah. my attention, my time. Because <laughs> each episode resets. So if you don't like an episode, there's one right behind it that right. you can check out. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, yeah. They were a lot of fun to make too. We really enjoyed working on them. We recently talked about all the different Halloween remakes and things like that. And I'm just curious, being a big horror head, what 
What would you like to see remade? Oh my gosh. Or maybe not, maybe not remade, but um, to piggyback on that, maybe a movie that you really like, kind of like what they did with Halloween, where they just, to be creatively free, they just picked the first movie as the canon and then made the sequel right. directly to that. Is there something like that you'd like to see? Right. You know, that's a tough question. Um, there's so many great horror classics, and sometimes I feel like if you try to remake them or redo them, they, <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. know, kind of loses their luster. Although I thought Halloween was really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, the way they did it, really, it was. It was very enjoyable and, and very well done. But maybe some of the old Hammer House films. Um, but um, like I said, I think most of them to me are classics, and that's for kind sure. Of, like, I, I would never remake The Exorcist. Oh my right, god, right, right. Like, you even, you know, what I mean, like, yeah, I just imagine there's got to be some good horror films out there that would just use a fresh coat of paint, right? New CGI, new just, you know what I mean? But, yeah, but I, again, I think that's kind of the appeal. Sure, I'm not sure. a big CGI person. Most of the horror films that we do are all practicals. Sure. They're mm -hmm. the monsters, the people are in that's the That's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in fact, we're just in post for two movies right now. We have one called Reed's Point, which is a rendition of the Jersey Devil. And that's we have, cool. Yeah, we have another one um, called They Crawl Beneath, which is a suspense thriller. So um, we were actually finishing two right now. Do, do you ever dig into like the costume? Because that's always been super cool to me is like hearing about like the different monster costumes and things mm -hmm. like that. Delving into that is always a lot of fun. Yeah. And again, that's a challenge too. Always yeah. coming up with monster, different monsters. We've done so many movies now with practical creatures and monsters. <laughs> kind of like <laughs> running out of what monster or creature we're going to do next. Uh, it's always a challenge trying to, you know, something mm -hmm. different. Yeah, sure. practical scares are definitely yeah. an experience. One hundred. I just watched uh, Exorcist three for the first time, and uh -huh. I've seen Exorcist two. Exorcist two is not uh, the same quality as the rest of the franchise, to put it nicely. But uh, I thought Exorcist three was really good. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. murder one, right? That's the, yeah. one, the detective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but again, you know, you can't touch the first one. I mean, no, for sure not. It was no. so it was so ahead of its time, and it just you know, Linda Blair was spectacular. Right. Um, the stuff they did, it's like, oh my god, like you know, it was crazy. The stuff they did. That movie was released, I think, in seventy three or seventy four, and it's like, wow, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, he seemed very knowledgeable about horror. That's awesome. I, it's like I said, it's one of my favorite genres because there's so much to it. And back to the remake thing, real quick. For every Evil Dead and Halloween remake we get, there's like a million prom nights and stuff that doesn't yeah. necessarily work out so well the second time around. So I'll tell you one of the ones I really liked. I'm kind of surprised they haven't remade is the Dead Zone with Christopher Walken. Yeah. Yeah, my, yeah, my cousin Dino actually made that movie. Um, yeah, that was one of my all-time favorites, too. I'm really surprised somebody hasn't remade it. I haven't seen it. I've only seen the show. Oh, my it's, gosh, uh, it's amazing. You have Anthony to see Michael. it for walking. Yeah, it was spectacular. I will make sure I do that, because yeah. Stephen King is one of my favorite uh, horror uh, mm -hmm. authors and films. His films fascinate me. Uh, I like mm -hmm. kind of when they make changes and when they don't. I'm one mm -hmm. of the people that really like the remake of The Shining even though it's obviously not as good as Kubrick Shining, but it was right. cool seeing the book also on screen. Right, but, um, right, right, right. I, I think we could talk to you all day. I really do. <laughs> what, what's what's coming well, next for you, Suzanne? Um, actually, we're working on a big, big show. Um, it's the 1911 um, shirtwaist factory fire that killed 140 girls in Manhattan in 1911. And we're hoping to um, hopefully get into production for that sometime, maybe November, December. That's the big one we're working on. But like I said, we're just finishing these two and then shooting more episodes of Suzanne Saturday Night Scares. So thank you fun. guys for having me on the show. And I hope your listeners will check out Suzanne Saturday Night Scares on Amazon Prime. Where can everybody find you online? Um, it's Suzanne De Laurentiis, S S S N, uh, Suzanne Saturday Night Scares on Instagram and Facebook, Suzanne Saturday Night Scares. All right, everybody, I'm from Justin and myself. You guys have a great day. Thank you.